So it's about acknowledging that a country's stock market isn't just reacting to its own internal news, but also to what its neighbors or economically linked peers are doing. That's a crucial departure from many traditional models, isn't it? Absolutely. And the inspiration for this particular study came from a deep learning model called RainNet. RainNet, like rain. Yeah, exactly. It was originally developed for precipitation. Yeah. Now casting, essentially predicting where and when it's going to rain next based on radar imagery. Wow, okay. So how do you get from rain to stocks? Well, this study adapts a similar spatially structured machine learning approach. The goal here is to leverage the geographic distribution of countries, their economic weights, and these cross-country peer effects to generate robust short-term equity return forecasts. So using the map-like structure. Precisely. The aim is to combine the powerful pattern recognition capabilities that come with machine learning with these economically motivated spatial structures to genuinely improve upon traditional technical indicators like basic moving averages, which often look at countries in isolation. That theory about spatially connected markets makes intuitive sense, but the leap to building a functional model from something like RainNet, that's where the rubber meets the road. What were the most ingenious adaptations they made, or perhaps the biggest hurdles they faced, in translating precipitation forecasting into equity market predictions? And what were the critical data choices? It was indeed a clever adaptation. Quite neat, really. The core structure of their financial model closely followed RainNet's architecture. For input data, they used weekly equity price change data, spanning a significant period from 2008 all the way to 2024. So a good long run of data. Yes. Now to adapt this financial data into a spatial format, much like a weather map, they constructed a 32 by 48 pixel grid representing the world. Like literally a grid. Yeah. Since approximately 29% of the Earth's surface is land mass, they allocated a corresponding proportion of these pixels to represent land areas. So they literally created a digital map for financial data, almost like a heat map for market movements. Exactly. It's a good way to put it. They then selected the 20 largest economies as of 2008. The big players. Right. And assigned each country a number of pixels proportional to its share of global GDP, scaled by the total number of land pixels. Okay, so size matters on the map. It does. Any regions on the map that didn't correspond to these specific economies were simply set to zero, creating a sparse but geographically meaningful input structure. This is a crucial element, representing countries not as isolated entities, but as part of a connected spatial grid. This allows the model to see and learn from their proximity and relative economic weight.